In this video, we're going to extend our knowledge of interval notation to encompass compound inequalities. Just to remember, just to remind you, interval notation, the basics are, each shaded region is one interval. We read it left to right. If we include the endpoint, we use brackets. If the endpoint is not included, we use parentheses. So let's take a look at what we need to do for a compound inequality. Again, each shaded region is one interval. But if we have a shaded region in two or more intervals, we're going to use the union symbol. So if you have shaded and shaded and there's a space between it, we need to use the union symbol to mean that we want all the points that are shaded. So let's take a look at an example. In this case, we have a compound inequality. X is bounded by negative 2 and 1. In this case, we say negative 2 is less than or equal to X, which is less than 1. What we're going to do when we graph it this time, we're actually going to graph pieces of it. We're not going to graph it all at once. So let's take a look at what's happening here. X is greater than or equal to negative 2. Negative 2, we have a greater than or equal to, which means we're going to use a bracket because it's including it. And we're going to shade to the right. The other piece is X is less than 1. So here we have 1 x is less than 1, we're going to use a parentheses, and we're going to shade to the left. Now, being that this is bounded by both of these inequalities, we can say that this is an intersection. Or you could use the intersection symbol. So you could say x is greater than or equal to negative 2, intersected with x is less than 1. So we really want only the things that are common to both. We want the intersection. And so whatever is shaded on both of these graphs is what we want in our final graph. So our final graph is going to have 1. It's going to have negative 2. And you might want to put some other details in here, such as negative 1 or 0 or 2. And you ask yourself, what is shaded on both of these graphs? Because we are bounded by both of them. Well, we have a bracket over here. We are including negative 2. Negative 2 is shaded on both. And this 1, 1 is not shaded on the second graph. 1 is shaded on the first graph, but not on the second. Which means we're going to have the parentheses, and we're going to shade between them. So the final graph is going to be uh, bracket at negative 2, parentheses at 1. And now writing the interval is just a matter of copying what's in this, what's in the graph. Bracket, negative 2, comma 1, parentheses. There is our interval notation for this problem. Let's take a look at another example. Again, we're starting with a compound inequality. And this compound inequality has an or, which means I'm going to take all these shaded pieces, and I'm having all these shaded pieces, and if it's in one or the other, I really want both of them. So in this case, this is a union. A union. So again, let's write this in pieces. Let's do the x is less than 2. Here's 2. We want it to be less than. We're going to shade to the left. And we're not including 2. So we use a parentheses. The other piece, x is greater than or equal to 3. Here's 3. x is greater than or equal to, which means we have a bracket, and we shade to the right. Let's put these little arrows in here. Now, how do we combine them? Well, this or says that if it's shaded on one or it's shaded on the other, it's okay. So when we come down here, we really are just going to sandwich these two graphs together. And when we sandwich them, we basically ask, if it's shaded on either one of them, it's going to be shaded in our final graph. So again, we have a 2, we have a 3, and again, I like to put in some other numbers just to make it fill up the neighborhood a little bit. Now, is 2 shaded? No, 2 is not, in, not shaded. It's got a parentheses. So I'm going to open the parentheses to the left, and I'm shading to the left as in our first graph. I'm also including a bracket here at 3. 3 is included, and I'm shading to the right. 
Now, getting back to the interval notation, which is the whole point of this exercise. Again, we read it left to right. Any shaded region is an interval, and if we have several intervals, we're going to use the union symbol. So again, we start off at negative infinity. We can't include negative infinity, so it has to be a parenthesis, because negative infinity is not an actual number. We end this interval with 2, and it is not included, because there is no equal to sign in the original inequality. We're going to use a union symbol because we want everything that's shaded on both. Not both, but shaded on either one. And this interval starts with 3, and we want to include 3. So we use a bracket, and this interval ends at positive infinity. And again, since infinity is not a number, we can't actually include the number infinity. So here's our final answer.